In this video, we're going to go ahead and continue with setting up our pawn by setting up our head mounted device or display so that way we can actually see it working properly in our scene. So, one thing to note you may notice as you're going into playtesting that you have a, a very annoying bong sound. You can disable that by finding the right option. Here we go, right here. Under Editor Preferences, Enable Sound, and whether to enable sounds, play an editor session. There is also another option that I find half the time. Oh, I hate finding it. Right here, using editor sounds. So under Miscellaneous, enable editor sounds, you can uncheck that. And under Play, enable sound, you can check or uncheck this. I prefer to just keep both of them unchecked. Because when you do that, you don't have an annoying sound when you go in and out of the play port. So you may have noticed that that went directly into our VR session. That's because between, I went ahead and tried my VR preview. So let's cover how that works first of all. Let's take our player start here. Let me pull him back up out of the scene. And let's hit play normally. Now if you have your head mounted device set up, your Vive, which is what we're using for this example, you'll notice if you hit play, nothing happens. Well, that's because you need to use the play and preview option. That can be found with this little drop down here, VR preview. Now, the few things to keep in mind. You do not need the Steam VR system. That's this right here. You do not need this running in order to do the VR preview. You simply need your device hooked up properly if you're using 4.11 and later, and it's going to go ahead and automatically initialize that. However, you may run into some problems. I would recommend running the Steam VR system before you run Unreal Engine, as it'll prevent some random problems such as the game not wanting to full screen if you're testing something else out. Plus, if you go into settings, it has a handy display here that shows you missed frames. Now we're showing missed frames right now because I'm not actually in the editor. And once I'm not in the editor, it goes ahead and it slows down. But this is nice to have on another display if you have the option. Or maybe next to the VR preview. So you can see how well it's running. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and move this off the screen. Keep in mind, you should keep the Steam VR beta running and enabled before you start up the Unreal Engine 4 editor. Just to eliminate any possible small problems. So let's go ahead and I'm going to run the VR preview. Now keep in mind because I'm using a fixed microphone, my sound will come in and out when I'm actually using the headset. I will do my best to try to make sure the sound is legible. If I need to re-record over it, I will go ahead and do that. But anything that is important, I will speak when I'm back at the desk clearly into the microphone. Anything while I'm speaking on the headset is more just extra information. So we'll start our VR preview, and right now we're going to have a few issues. I'm going to go ahead and grab my headset and move it around a little bit. Now I'm picking up the headset, and you can move it, and you can see you actually have full head tracking, and we haven't actually done anything. And that's one of the nice features of version 4.11 and above, is the camera system automatically takes into effect the HMD tracking. Now we have a small issue here. I'm holding the device about three feet off the ground. Now if I put it on the ground, where it is now, while it may appear that we are on the ground, we are actually not on the ground. And this is one of those issues that we're going to deal with right now. By default, the Vive, because of the chaperone system, uses the floor as their zero, 00 origin point. If we look at our character here, he's actually up 112 units not zero units. So we're going to offset it by 100 centimeters at this point. What we need to do is set the Z value down to zero. What this will do is drop your character down to zero to match the starting point for your vibe. Now if we hit play, well we're going to notice another small issue. We can't see anything. We're actually in the ground. When I pick up my vibe and move it, once I hit a certain point, we're going to go above the ground. Now you may be thinking, well, our origin's at the ground, our headset's at the ground, why are we below the ground? 
This is one of those really annoying things that happen when you use the default map. Our actual base here, our floor, they have offset it by 20. So if we reset that to zero as well, and we look, we'll actually find the ground is now zero, and our origin for our player start is going to be zero. And when we run this, you can actually see we're right on the line of the ground. And then as I lift it up and lower it back down, we will go basically like we are on the ground. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back up on my desk. That way we are no longer physically on the ground, but we've corrected that issue. So keep that in mind. Your zero origin point should be the zero origin point for your level, not necessarily level, your, your Z zero on your player should match the floor of whatever item. So, I mean, technically, if we wanted to take this item and we moved it up and our starting point was 200 Z up, just make sure your player starts at 200 Z up. That way, when it actually plays, when we drop to the ground, we have an appropriate Z zero. So keep that in mind. If you're starting point is going to be offset by any amount make sure your player is offset by that amount let me go ahead and restart this or else we'll be flying in the ground and that's going to be our first issue that we've resolved then as you can see we can go ahead and move and we're properly offset now something else to think about we have collision now if we were to use our character and we were to spawn him in Let's go ahead and make her character again. Let me show you the issue. This is one reason why I don't like to use the character either. Because it comes by default with collision. And by default with collision, it's going to collide you. And then it's going to either cause an issue where you don't spawn. Or it pops you out of your collision. And then will end up moving your default orientation. So if we move our character into here, you'll notice he popped right out of the ground. If I move him down to the Z for the zero, and let's move him back out, and we were to use him, one of the issues we're going to find is because he has a collision component on him, the capsule, it's going to pop him out of the ground right when it starts, which means our HMD device, our Vive, is going to then go boop, it pops up, let's move it like this, it's going to offset by approximately 90 the view so we're going to be about 90 centimeters above the ground as our floor which means when our player stands he's now going to be offset by 90 centimeters and you're just going to have a bunch of issues so keep that in mind if you use a character you may have to do something else in order to offset now a secondary thing you may be thinking to yourself oh, this whole time i'm doing what you're doing i'm doing what you're doing and it's still not working for me i don't understand i'm still offset well, there's one other thing that I kind of jumped past and that we're going to have to adjust. Here's our VR pawn. And let's go ahead and run this. And let me put my camera, the headset, back on the ground. So that's our origin point on the ground, which is good. That's how we want it. Yours, however, may be higher. And the reason for that is inside of our pawn, and it's the base eye height. By default, that's going to be 64. Let's compile and save and run. And you'll notice we're now above the ground. Well, I went ahead and I adjusted that down to zero because our base eye height with the Vive is zero. And that's how you get that issue corrected. So, for anyone who's been watching and confused why my eye height is not matching, you need to go into your pawn and set your base eye height to zero. We'll go ahead and save and compile that. And then now we're done. So we've gone ahead and we've set up our basic pawn, but we're not done yet. Yet again, there's more buts. Our basic pawn, if you notice, we go into our editor and we go into our viewport. When we created it, we only have our pawn and the default scene route. We need to add a camera. The reason we need to add a camera is if we don't have a camera, we're going to end up having an issue later on in regards to our controllers. The controllers work with the camera and work with the root in order to properly orient themselves. 
if you add in controllers without a camera, it's not going to know the proper orientation and your controllers are going to end up getting stuck. So let me go ahead and add a camera now. We'll go to add component and we'll go to camera. And then we'll go ahead and compile and we'll go ahead and run again. And you'll notice nothing changed. And that's good. That is the point. The pawn has a camera. If nothing is on your pawn or any of your actors or characters that you're using. Because you'll notice the character didn't have a camera either. By default, the player camera manager will create a camera and attach it. When you attach a camera, it's going to go ahead and inherit all of those settings and use them. So that's why if we go back into our pawn now and we change our base height, eye height back and we hit play, well, you'll notice nothing changed. The base eye height only affects the base pawn. This is why I wasn't too worried about showing you this change to zero. Once we add in our camera, our camera is at this point. Whoops, I keep moving the ground. Try our player start here. When we spawn in our pawn, right here, our camera is right here at the origin point. So when we set this back down to zero, our camera is going to be here at the origin point, And it ignores the base eye height because the base eye height only applies to the built-in camera. So if you skip some of the stuff or you're wondering what's going on, now if we go to like 500 for the base eye height and hit play, well, we're still at the zero. If I move my headset and move him up and down, he works well. Let me go ahead and put him back on the desk now. And he's back on our desk. So, base eye height is, again, only useful if you're using your default built-in camera. Once we add our own camera component, two things happen. We no longer have to worry about the base eye height. It's going to go ahead and use the camera's location, which is 000. zero, zero. And we're going to use the new 4.11 lock to HMD orientation position checkbox, which is on by default. And you'll find that is helpful later on if you want to lock something to your HMD like a user interface. At this point in time, we're going to go ahead and wrap up the video. We have taken our pawn, put him in the correct position. He's at zero for our Z value. We've gone ahead and added our camera, which we'll be using as the basis for our HMD position. We've gone ahead and I've showed you how, if it's not the right spot, it's not going to work. And I've also told you about the collision issues. In the next vi video, we're actually going to get into a little more fun. We're going to go ahead and add our motion controllers, set up some basic meshes so we can play around with moving those controllers, and then we'll discuss that collision issue yet again.